Bună ziua, dragi spectatori! Iată-ne din nou împreună la o nouă ediție a emisiunii deja favorită pentru dumneavoastră, Cunoaștere dincolo de știință. Astăzi avem plăcerea să o avem ca invitată deosebită pe Vita Reveli. Vita, după cum îi spune și numele, nu locuiește, nu trăiește în România, dar beneficiem de vizita ei în București pentru a discuta un subiect, zicem noi, deosebit de interesant, și anume vom discuta, vom discuta despre medicină chineză. Multă lume cunoaște noțiunea de medicină tradițională chineză, însă veți avea surpriza să vedeți că discuția nu este despre ceea ce vă așteptați, ca de obicei de altfel. Cum, bineînțeles, Vita nu vorbește limba română, interviul va fi în limba engleză și vom continua în acest fel cu Vita. Vita, welcome! Hello! Very nice to have you! Thank you! Uh, would you be so kind to tell uh, our viewers what exactly are you doing? Oh my God! So uh, exactly, uh, more or less. More okay. Or less. So I'm doing. I I have done Chinese medicine for a long time, for over 35 years, and um, but Chinese medicine is something very movable, and it has always been something very movable. So what people understand as Chinese medicine is not probably what I mean by it. So this is the main thing that uh, I started off with what is called traditional Chinese medicine. And traditional Chinese medicine is something that really was born in 1929 in the format we have it now. <coughs> And that came under the impulse of modernization of uh, China losing a couple of wars and having to pay a lot of war debts. And so they tried to make it more modern and more like Western medicine. So I did that for a long time, and then I thought mm -mm, something is not right there. And because I, sp I studied in China and I studied Chinese as well, I started to research and realized that what they do now is completely different from how it, it was born and what they meant to begin with. So I went back to, the, to what I call ancient Chinese medicine, with influence from the classic and very, very little modern Chinese medicine. When uh, you say ancient, what do you mean? Well, Chinese medicine, before being a medicine, is a concept of life. In it, it, what they, they are really interested in finding out is what it means to be alive and what life involves. So the discourse of the Chinese at the beginning was a discourse on physiology, if you want, rather than a discourse on pathology. And what comes out from the old books is that if you understand how to live, then you don't get sick. But what is happening now is that we receive patients. And what we do, we treat their diseases, but we don't try to bring them back to the level of physiology, which means to the real health that they're entitled to have. And the reason why this is happening is because um, one of the difficulties is that culturally, We have moved so much away from the origin of thinking that we are part of nature, actually that nature determines what we are, and that there are principles in, uh, in the world that are universal and apply to human beings too. So what is happened, has happened is that we have conceived ourselves through the ages as the creators of nature. So we are controlling things rather than allowing things to go with us and go with them, right? So, and this means health. Anything else is not health, right? More or less. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to confess to our viewers that uh, I spent some time uh, with you, try to 
grab as much as I can from this, um, let's say, ancient <coughs> knowledge. And um, it struck me how modern it is from some perspectives. Yes, exactly. The thing is that we, what Chinese medicine did was that it moved towards a more Newtonian model of the world. So everything is centered around matter and we try to understand what happens in this part of the body and we don't really care about the connection that this part has with the rest. And we think that healing people is healing matter. So when people come, they have, say, a neck ache, and we go straight to the neck, put needles there, really deep, try to get the structure of the, of the, the body. Um, but in the beginning, the, the main question was the void. Yeah? So in, in the old times, the concept of, the main concept was this sense of void that is where the universe comes from and that you have inside of you. Lacan, Jean-Jacques Lacan, the psychoanalyst, talks a lot about this, is the creative emptiness from which new things can come. But in the, the modern concept is a filled space from which there is nothing new that can come, right? And I think that in that sense he's talking about the field of all possibilities, like um, a more quant quantic kind of understanding, I think. No, I'm not a physicist, but it, it has to do with, you know that in the field, in this field, you can find everything that you want, and then you can go into that field that can be your heart, for instance, and find what you want and start creating it. And this were telling the ancient yes. Chinese. Yes, the ancient Chinese were saying, for instance, if you read uh, Chuangzi, he was saying, I am dreaming of a butterfly, so they were always, mm, how can I say, muddling the borders between me and the, and, the, and the rest of the world. Whereas now we say, this is the limit of my body and this is where the rest starts. They were saying, well, I'm dreaming of a butterfly, but I'm, where am I? Am I Zhuangzi in the dream of the butterfly or am I the one dreaming the butterfly? So, yeah, it's a very fluid reality in which all possibilities are present, rather than just one. Okay. Uh, what is interesting here is that um, you are talking about uh, ancient Chinese, but hearing you in another context, what you are saying is um, applicable 100% to what a quantum physicist would talk. Yes. So the same knowledge was in China a few thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And we are struggling now through the uh, main and most important uh, area of physics to come to the same conclusions. Yes. So <clears throat> what we are teaching here, what we are talking about here? Well, okay, um, so when I teach, I have always the feeling that I'm not, I'm not prepared to teach. Meaning, I don't read the class before I go to class and try to repeat it, because I know that the minute I get to the class and I start talking, I have ideas that come up and that I've never thought of before and I start sharing them with the students. So they are f very Chinese because I am completely trained in that stuff. But I, I realize that I'm moving out of, how can I say, I'm, I am not following a structure. I am more volatile, like Zhuangzi. Like, you know, let's see where we're gonna get now. I'm more curious, yeah? And I think that when you talk about the human being, we should be more curious than creating definition of who they are. Uh, am I answering your question? Yeah, you are also always answering the oh, questions. Okay. <laughs> <It's great. coughs> 
<coughs> Great. It depends on what everybody understands from that answer, well, but yeah, okay. the answer is there. Okay. Always. But I mean, I, I have come up to the point where I say the, the Chinese are the concept of life which quantum physicists now have discovered by themselves, maybe, or maybe by also studying something that has to do with China. Uh, but what they're doing, it, they're demonstrating what the Chinese knew. So one of the, the main issues for me is that, are, is ancient knowledge something that we should get rid of? Or is ancient knowledge something that we should explain? Or take it as good and then say, okay, let me see if I can explain it. And that would cause, um, would make science go in another direction where, you know, scientists create paradigms, paradigms and then they research them. So why don't they take what we know, like ancient knowledge, and take it as a, um, the, the question that they want to answer to in a physical world of proofs and research, da 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 da. Yeah? Instead of saying it's not valid. But why not taking them as a base and going further? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were saying um, just before that uh, Chinese medicine was uh, dealing with uh, everything uh, what is alive, what is living. With the meaning of life, yeah. With the meaning of life. <coughs> is there something in our universe that is not alive? No. Okay. No. So... But, but what the Chinese says that in the void, that is the creative power, you don't have form. So you have life in a way that we will never be able to understand what it means because it's life not attached to this, right? So everything is alive all the time, even if we don't touch it. Okay. But we don't call that energy, at least not the ancient Chinese. Okay. Um. We call it life. A rock is alive? Yeah. How come? Because it's, it's quite difficult to understand in our modern world that a rock is alive. But uh, if you observe the, the rock in time, the rock will change. So it's, it, it, we, we, this is Newtonian understanding, right? You go and look at this in your time, in, in space and time, and you freeze things. But if you look at things from a, a much wider perspective, maybe you, you, you meet a point where time and space don't even exist. The Newtonian uh, <coughs> system has a very peculiar characteristic, uh, which is called the isolated system. Right. And all the Newtonian physics is studied through an isolated system. So they take something, they put it here, and they say, okay, now we study. Yes. But it's out of context. Oh, well, thanks God. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, how can we do all these connections? Because everything is connected with everything, right? Well, the, the way I understand it, because, and the Chinese kept on talking about this, it's not a question of connection, because <coughs> if you have, say, two glasses that are separate and you put them close to each other, then you connect them. So for me, even grammatically and in language, if you use the word and, you're putting two things that are different together. So that's connection. But for the Chinese, it was a question of resonance. So they are the same thing. We are not connecting anything. It's oneness, one thing. And this oneness has many expressions of itself, not of something different. So in the forms look different, but the, the substratum, the, the, uh, the life, yeah, is the same. Right? So we are we're not connected, we're one thing with many, many, many different expressions on the surface. Okay, is that surface is border? I, no, I think the surface is space the space that we define by being bodies. Mm -hmm. So what, what defines the space that we are beyond our skin? Defines? 
uh, the, the, the space yeah? that we are. Yeah, but the word define, what does it mean in your mind? Um, <coughs> you said that uh, we are beyond our skin I in the space. Yes, that life is more than just my life. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, you say that we reach everything. Yes. Yes. Uh, if, you th if you think about New Age, for instance, they keep on talking about mirrors. So, in a mirror is something that is there and is not me. And in fact, in a mirror, I see myself the other way around. So, for instance, I have this mole, and every time I look at myself from the, in the mirror, it's on this side. And I go, what? Yeah, because my brain cannot get it. Um, but when you go, when you are a continuum, Right? So what's behind my body? A continuum. And who am I? A continuum of the whole thing. So it's not a question of mirrors, it's a question of the same thing being reproduced all the time with different characteristics, if you want, but in, within this... In this water you have many cells, but you only see water, mm -hmm. for instance. <coughs> this is a um, kind of philosophical discussion how um, can we go from those things to physiology, to what um, Chinese medicine can practically do for someone? Okay, so if you, if you look at life and you understand that life it exists before you, knew you and after you, so it's not defined by the existence of small things, but it's something that it includes all things, even if this die, like the cells in my body. A cells die, but I'm still alive. So if you understand life in that sense, what they say is that in, in, in the process of becoming form and life form, vital form, then we go through many, many, many subtle stages which are part of this continuum. And what the Chinese do, they isolate they, they try and classify life into phenomena. But not like Newton? No, they call them in yang, okay? And again, if you look at modern medicine and Chinese medicine, this concept of in yang is completely bizarre. It has to do with, I don't know, I mean, uh, dialectic materialism, which is a, a Marxist concept. But everybody knows about it. In, well, no, in they don't. Yang. No, they don't. They don't, they think they do, because the communists had a vested interest in presenting Yin Yang as class struggle. So they say that Yin Yang fight all the time, and they, they contain each other, like the classes and the aristocrats, whatever, the ruling class. But the, the, you have beautiful poems on alchemy, Chinese poems, where they say, for instance, uh, when spring comes, the Yang is born first, and yin follows it, and then we have the flowers. And then when yang goes down, the yin follows second, and the leaves start to follow. So what the Chinese were saying is that yang is the leading master of life. So yang is the life, and the form follows life. So in, in medicine, when we look at a person, the question for us, for my, my group of people, is to ask how much life is there and how can I protect this life and how can I make this life enhance this life so that the yin, the body, can follow. So the, the, the focus is never this, but it's always the life that guides it as a, as a kind of principle. Right? So this is medicine, this is the way we do medicine. Quite different. <laughs> Very different. Mm -hmm. You know, f so for instance, they said that yin, the, the communists said that the yin is water, and they really meant this water, <coughs> but in the ancient concept of creation of the, the, the I Ching, for instance, where you have the trigrams, three you know, lines that are formed between yin, yang, and they, they combine so that you have more yin, more yang, more straight line, more broken line, maybe we should buy some drawings. Um, uh, there is, there is a, a trigram called Kan that is called water. 
So what the ancients were talking about was the kind of this special energy where you have form and fire in, in this form, meaning is alive. This matter is alive. But the communist made this thing, this thing, right? So the absurdity is that in modern Chinese medicine, if you have a lot of people who are very hot, you try to go like a fire brigade and you put water in them. But what you do is that you, you um, put the fire out. And when you put the fire out, you put life out. Right? Whereas the idea in the old times was to take this excess of heat and heat has the tendency to go, to go out. This is pathological in a, in a person. There should be a, a mechanism whereby this heat is taken and rooted down and kept down. Right? So where, it, where it should be. Where it should be. Well, it, it, in the daytime it should go out and make me move and in the night time it should go back in. So if you have insomnia, it means that it doesn't go back in. So what people do with insomnia is that they put water. So they, they put you to sleep, but it's, they switch the fire off. So the idea is not to switch it off, but to make it descend and go back into his house, house home, whatever. It's about a correct flow. It's about, yes, it's about a correct flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because the, the, the sentence says, the ancient belief was, when young grows, yin expresses itself, and when yang declines, yin goes into hiding. If you look at the daytime, when the sun comes up, all the flowers open, the, the birds start singing, you wake up, and when the sun sets, the flowers close, the birds get quiet, and you go to sleep. So this is what we should follow, but we don't. Uh, in medicine, in modern, modern Chinese medicine. The contrary, uh, we start to um, make um, ourselves uh, a goal to detach from this uh, cycle of life. Exactly. That, you know, in, in, a, in a more visual way, <coughs> sometimes I look at the way they, they work in modern Chinese medicine, and it's like they're trying to bring night on earlier. It's like they're saying to the sun, look, you know, you should go down a bit earlier because now we, we must deal with this problem. And that's not the way to deal with it. It's like you say to the, hey, 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 no, it's not the right time. You should not be there at midday. <coughs> yeah, and, and because Chinese medicine is basically a concept of life and a cosmology, then you should really go with it and try to understand the deep meaning of things and apply and see the, the person as resonance, as resonating with the same principles. So what applies outside, this is what the Chinese said before, applies inside. Not because it's a mirror, but because we're the same thing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And um, after the commercial break, um, I want to discuss with you uh, what exactly is with that uh, resonance, because we are using the word, but what does it mean exactly? Mm -hmm. We will be back okay, super. after commercial. Great. So we are back again after commercial uh, with Vita. We continue talking about uh, the amazing Chinese medicine, uh, which uh, until meeting her, I had also a totally different idea. Let's see what we can get more of it. Uh, <laughs> okay. You, you were spoken about <coughs> resonance. Um, resonance actually is a word. Um, there is another word that um, quantum physics is using a lot. Uh, entanglement. Do you mm -hmm. heard about entanglement? Um, yes, but I, I can't say I understand exactly what it is. Okay, <coughs> which uh, uh, probably is uh, the same with most people with resonance. Everybody heard about it, but uh, mm -hmm. what is... So what do you understand through this resonance between things, between 
Um, let me clarify one thing. When I heard the first time the word entanglement, it made me feel as though two things were getting connected. Is that right? Uh, more or less. More or less. We'll, so, we'll explain after. Okay. But. So, what I, is what I said before. There is no such thing as separate parts. This is a, just a visual illusion. They, they, don't, they don't exist. <coughs> so, when you think of resonance, I think when I think of resonance, the best the, the best way I can do that is by uh, trying to go beyond the bodies to 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 see what's common. And when I see what's common, then the bodies and the the bodies the matter are like spots that are totally insignificant. They can be there and they cannot be there. But that continuity is always there. So resonance is the byproduct of this continuity, is the way in which this continuity expresses itself in many different ways, as I said before, but um, without breaking its own unity. Right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if entanglement means the same. Um, what? Quantum physicists are striked now about their experiments is um, with uh, small particles, of course, uh, that they can influence each other, uh, being uh, at distance, at huge distance. Mm -hmm. Their conclusion is that two particles, uh, one on Earth and one on the Moon, they will influence each other instantaneously without having any connection. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing <coughs> with what you are saying with this continuity. Yes. That but is that because of waves? No. No? Uh, no, no, it's no? not, it's not uh, uh, about uh, waves because it's instant. Waves okay. always need time okay. to go okay. from point A mm -hmm. to point B. And time is speed of light, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fastest that wave can do that. But now they have experiments where things are happening in real time, no matter the distance between the particles. As if they were one. So there As is a simultaneity there. Yes. So there is no time. There is no time. Okay. Well, that's resonance. Exactly. It looks like you are defined by time, but in and reality, space. and space, but in reality, you're not. Exactly. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. That's it. <coughs> Absolutely. So th that's why I I link the two words because also in, in my impression they are referring to the same thing. Yes. But when you treat a person, you are because you're not treating the, the knee, but you're treating the, the resonance of that person with everything else, it is almost as if you go out of time and space and you try and touch this emptiness, this continuity, and make this continuity work for the person. Right? Yeah. So um, there is this stuff in New Age. I mean, I'm not a very big fan of New Age, but, but um, I hope people will not hate me because of that. But I know there is this stuff about living the now. And if you think about time, living the now, the minute you've said now is already gone in time. So when you live in the now, really live in the now, you live in no time. You break it down to the point where time is not there anymore. That's the only now that exists. Yes. And this is where health can happen. Because otherwise, the minute you treat this, something material has already happened somewhere else, and it's gone. Yeah? Clear? Yes. Uh, <coughs> very clear. And there are modern theories that are saying that um, time in itself induce illness. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
the perception of time yes. induce illness. Yes. Because you are referring to the past and to the future in the wrong manner. Yes. And because you are doing this, some kind of bad emotions appear in the body, which lead later in long term or medium term in all kinds of diseases. There is this, the, we have been talking about the body so far and the human being as body, but um, a big part of Chinese medicine is not about body, but it's about consciousness. Mm, what is that? Right? And the way they, they define consciousness is exactly this, being able to get to the center, the, the Confucius used to call it zhong, which is like a square with a line in the middle, <clears throat> and um, this line indicates your connection with everything, so the continuity, your li the lifeline, and this, the circle of your life. Mm -hmm. So the whole challenge is to overcome the circle of your life, the timing thing, and to get aligned. The cycles. With, yes. Mm -hmm. So the cycles are just fictitious things, because what you really are living all the time with is this lifeline. Okay, but what they say is that you find this in the, in the heart. So, again, if you think about modern psychology and, and New Age mainly, I think, uh, they, they, they keep on saying, listen to your heart. And I just wonder what heart are they telling me to listen to? Because my heart is made of my traumas, my, the things that I've gathered from the outside world, the times I've been betrayed by my friends, my boyfriends, my mother told me off, blah, blah. So my heart is the, 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 the animal that reacts in a, in a pri prime, prime way, like, like an uh, untamed bear, right? Um, and my mind is made of all these thoughts. They've also been trained by, culturally trained by my experience, my life. But what the Chinese say is that there is a human heart and then there is a Tao heart. Tao heart is the heart of the principles and the lifeline. So what you have to tune into all the time is this heart, not your human heart, but this um, innocent heart that is conscious of your eternity, basically. And when you look at yourself and you see that this is an illusion and what you really are here to do is to live in this infinity, this now, then you, 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 you can see, for instance, that example like Joe Dispenza, one of my, my teachers, is a neurologist, he's one of, I think, the main scientists in the world at the moment, and he's proving that. He's proving that you, you do some things, you, you are, the more you conscious you are, the, the more the, the neurons connect disconnect and connect in another way, they create new genes, new proteins, and your body is healed. And it's placebo. Where is the consciousness? So consciousness is this ability of being always in, the, in, in, in this Tao heart, for the Chinese. So consciousness is in the Tao heart? Is it, is, yeah, it's out of time and space. Mm -hmm. So consciousness has nothing to do with the brain? No. Mm -hmm. No. You guide, you can guide the brain, you, you can, you can, your consciousness can make these neurons untangle and reconnect in another way, but they will not do it without you being conscious, mm -hmm. because they live on habits. So the past is always telling you, you know, oh, you know, do you remember your experience? Well, this is dangerous. Be afraid. Be afraid, mm -hmm. so you don't try. You don't get out of your comfort zone and you are informed by your past and the past can only inform you for another day and another day and another day as it did yesterday. So in 90 years you're going to be the same person you have today because the information is always the same. So consciousness is about breaking this information and creating another one ex novo be, from the field of possibility. Being aware that you are doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, a few moments ago you made a link between two words that strike me. You said 
now beside infinity. Well, you now said that is infinity. You, you live now in this infinity. Yes, you li if you live now, you live in infinity. You live in no time. Okay, in no in no time, it's okay. As a consciousness, it, it, yes, it, it's understandable. But what's about the infinity? But in, in no, no time and infinity. I mean, I'm I'm not a physicist. Okay, try me. Okay, can you explain that to me then? <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw the ball to the experts. Uh, I want to I want to hear this from your perspective of. Um, Chinese medicine expert because it's fascinating. Uh, me as mm, not necessarily a physicist but having link with modern science it's I, I can talk about this but I want to hear from your perspective. You know the, the, the concept of Kung emptiness is and it, that's Wuji also no, lack of polarity. They're basically the same concept, but where with Uji, which is just this circle that you see a lot of the times, um, the idea is that, that that is what is there, it will always be there. Taiji is this symbol of Tao, and that's how we live, uh, and it declines life as matter and as life. But the, the, it's always you always have this circle around, so you, you're always in the, this infinity. So infinity in Chinese medicine is defined as void, basically. So there are no boundaries. It's like infinite time means that basically there is no time, mm -hmm. right? But because time has a beginning and an end, like space has a beginning and an end. So the now can only be. In, 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 in Tao terms, can only be infinite time, mm -hmm. nothing else. Okay. Is that is satisfying that the brain of the physicist? Is that <coughs> exactly what says quantum mechanics? Really? Of course. Oh my God. They are saying that at the Planck's level, there is an infinite potential of energy. which we would call life rather than energy, but yeah. Mm, okay. Quantum mechanics must do some more steps until they realize that this is life. They are not there yet. They're not there yet. Okay, well, they can come and ask our advice if they want. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. The, the, you, you'll find back home a line of physicists at your home waiting for you to, to ask you about it, yes, of course, for sure. <coughs> yeah, but I think this thing about about um, this void being our heart, reflecting the the infinite void, is really really interesting. And it's you know if you if you start teaching your patients, for instance, to connect with this part and let go of all the other illusion, this and that and that, and of course you have a back pain. And you want to get out of it, but um, it, I'm not saying that you should not have acupuncture to treat your back pain. But what I'm saying is that when you are actually have a person in front of you, the back pain is one aspect of his whole life. So you can take take away the back pain, but what you, you will not take away if you do a symptomatic treatment is the person that carries that back pain and the reasons why that back pain came up in the first place. Mm, because he, he, he has bad posture, because he stands, because whatever, yeah? <clears throat> so for, for me, medicine is, is the curiosity to be able to travel with the patient within what's hidden. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's... Um, n n now you are saying that <coughs> what you do um, when you work with your patients is actually coaching? Um, I, I am actually very confused because there is coaching, there are psychologists, there are psychoanalysts, there are psychotherapists, <coughs> and I don't know what, what is the difference amongst all of them. What I think we do 
I, okay, if I'm trying to, to, because I do it, so I don't explain it normally. <coughs> but my idea is to make the patient ask questions to themselves. Instead of being the victim of a situation, so, you know, the classical thing is, doctor, doctor, I'm not feeling well, what can you do for me? So, I am a victim, something happened to me, I am oh, like this, I come to you, I take my problem, I put it on your table, and I expect you to go like two, 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 and I don't have anything. Then I go out, maybe the pain is gone, I go out and I... Do I, the same thing. I do the same thing, because, I, yeah. And so I'm always in a position of victim, who knows that I'm going to suffer from something. So if you put the patient in a position where you make them understand that um, they have to go with life, and what it means for them is their research. So make them ask the question of what it means to them, go with life. So, so you tell me that you, you actually try to make them aware and responsible. Absolutely. Okay, I don't like Chinese medicine. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So, so how many patients do you have? Well, quite a few, but the problem with, with us is that patient come, for instance, now I'm doing, doing the, the students' clinical training and we are seeing 60 patients a week in three days. So the students are being trained to work with the patients in this way. And we have done two weeks and we're already running out of patients because they get better too fast. So we don't have 100 patients, no. Because our patients come and we give them some homework to do and they do it, so we see them in a month. I don't need to be after you like a baby. You know, you either do the homework and you don't do it. Uh, and you don't need the needle to um, sedate you or punish you all the time. You know, become active in your life and see yourself as a creator in your life. So they do come back. But um, we have a turnover which is much faster than most other acupuncturists. I, I sometimes don't understand how some people go and have acupuncture for two, three, four years. And I wonder, well, wouldn't things have changed anyway? <coughs> right? Other things might happen in yeah, someone's circumstances life. Circumstances. Yeah. So, the, the, for me, the feedback is when things happen fast, not on a symptomatic level, but on... I mean, I, I can give you a case, which is not a nice one, but it's very illustrative. We had a patient who had backache, and one of them, it was recommended to us by another practitioner who was seeing the daughters. And he, this guy was uh, raping the daughters since they were kids. <coughs> and the, the practitioner did not want to have this patient because he would have killed them. So he sent it to, me, to us. But he sent the story with us. And the point is that you treat his backache and you send him out to rape the daughters again. That's a question, right? So we had to work with him in a such a way that we touched on that issue indirectly because he didn't tell us and kept him until we were satisfied that his conscience had been touched so that going out he would be another person, not a person without a backache. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a kind of social healing. Is he there was, there was a guy called Sun Sun Yao. He lived in 600 years ago, more. And he said, health is a social business. So when I heal somebody, I heal society and seven generations below this person. Because I will educate my children in another way, if I'm conscious. They will educate their children, then at some point it will fade away. But Always think that when you treat a patient now, you're treating a lot more than that person. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's big. Very wise Chinese <coughs> medicine. So are you coming to be treated or not? Uh, no, because I have no problem. But you said I hate Chinese medicine before. <coughs> um, I said I don't like and it was a joke. Okay. Because uh, I put it in the context of our society where awareness and responsibility are not quite the most common 
uh, values. Yeah. Nowadays. It's always somebody else's fault. Somebody <clears throat> else's responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I no blame for anything. Yes. And That's the victim that I was telling you about. Exactly. Um, I know that um, I heard at some point that um, in Chinese medicine uh, the heart is um, the combination between brain and the heart. Yes, yes. What, what? There was no distinction because the, the, <coughs> the, the heart was seen as a palace, an empty palace, void, zhong, center, surrounded by walls. And that was the pericardium. So the pericardium was not what we mean now as the kind of that tissue where all the, the, mm -hmm. the arteries and um, veins or whatever uh, are found, the, the vessels are found, but it was the, the, the protector of the heart. Um, they, that, they had no concept of brain um, in that way because they thought that the heart was making both thoughts and emotions. And that, that's really interesting because we, we are Cartesians, yeah? So we have thoughts here, emotions here, and body out there. But for them, if you look at the structure, for instance, of the organs, which we insist calling them organs, but in Chinese they're called zang. zang and zang means the hidden that is manifested. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different concept. You can see that every zang, for instance, what we call the liver, gan, it's both body, emotion and psyche, right? <coughs> so, so everything is there. So everything is there. And it's not like expressed at different times. They're all part of the same thing. Like you cannot separate one and the other in a Newtonian way, put them on the table, examine them and then psh, next, next one, right? So when um, they were uh, thinking about thoughts and emotions, of course you think something and you feel something. You feel something and you think something. If you're upset, you don't have positive thoughts. Yeah? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have positive thoughts, you look at the world in a negative way. How can it disentangle them? <coughs> Very interesting, on one hand. On the other hand is that I think we need like 10 a series like this one to <laughs> at least uncover a bit of your knowledge in this uh, type of, we call it medicine, but we can see that it's far beyond yes, medicine. Much more medicine. And <coughs> that's why it is so fascinating and it is something that is coming from many hundred or thousand years ago. And it's very interesting that they are perfectly applicable nowadays and produce tremendous results. Right. But mm, no more pills, no more money, no more uh, addiction. Exactly, because the minute people take responsibility, they don't need to run to the doctor so much. Mm -hmm. Well, Even to me. You know, we are made uh, redundant. Yeah. Not needed. So, I hope Vita will find you again around here and we will be able to talk some more about the Super. things. Uh, because I'm sure that our viewers will wait you when you'll come. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Vita. Lovely.